Today we are going to install some Boat Vent 3 um, cover ventilation caps onto our boat cover. Uh, we've got a two-piece snap-on cover on this cobalt we own and it does not have any vents in it and with the moisture in the air right now it's uh, not started to get damp in the boat yet but we're gonna go ahead and do this as a preventative measure. These are the Boat Vent 3's um, slightly better than the Boat Vent 2's. The Boat Vent 3's have a much larger base with more venting. Um, I think 40% larger is what, uh, what they say. And then the other part of it that I liked doing some research is you can see right here there's a little bit of an angle. So the old one was flat here. So if you had uh, rain coming in sideways or kind of dripping off of this going down, it could potentially sit on that flat surface right there and go into the vent. On this one, they angled it and also put a lip right there. So any sort of water dripping off the cap, even if it's coming in a little bit sideways, uh, does not uh, have any chance of going into the vent holes there. It's fairly easy on the installation. Um, what you're gonna do is obviously disassemble this. This is the ring that holds it on, uh, the screw, the nut if you want to call it that. And then it's a, a two-piece design apart from the nut. You've got this section that sits on top of your cover, and then uh, it's got the serrated teeth right there, and you see all the little holes there. The holes are where the teeth in this ring sit. So the teeth are gonna pierce through your, your cover material, sit into those holes, and then also the serrated edge on each of those little uh, rectangle serrated uh, elevations there also helps to hold the cover. And then you put the nut onto the threads here and that's it. So for cutting the hole, it's a little bit of a bigger hole than the Boat Vent 2. The Boat Vent 2 had a hole that was uh, a, a little bit bigger than your pole diameter. On this one, you're going to make a hole that uh, the entire uh, screw section can fit through and you're gonna have very little room for error. So what we're gonna do is place this on our canvas material and then draw with a permanent marker around the edge of that to uh, template the, the hole we gotta cut and then uh, go at it with some scissors, cut, and, and install the vents. So we're gonna start that here in just a second. All right, so this is gonna be the first of the three holes we're gonna cut for the three vents. I went ahead and just uh, placed this over the uh, top of the canvas where the reinforced patch and the snap was underneath for the, uh, the leg to hold the cover up. Uh, placed it on there, traced out the, uh, the line, and we're going to cut that out with a scissor real carefully. I'm going to start by cutting on the inside of this line just to make sure we don't cut too much. Uh, test fit it and then make sure it fits. If it still needs a little bit more room, we'll take a little bit more material off. Okay, we've got our piece cut out here. Um, you can see that's the old snap that was underneath and the reinforcement material. The Boat Vent 3 states that it does not require the reinforcement material underneath the canvas. I'm going to go ahead and leave it in there just to make sure it's as strong as possible. But um, for your purposes, if you don't have the reinforcement material underneath, as far as the documentation on the Boat Vent 3 site from the manufacturer says, you don't need any sort of reinforcement material under there, but for the sake of today, I'm going to go ahead and leave that under there since we already have it in place. All right, we've got the boat bent through the hole that we made. And if you look on the underside, it is all the way through. You want to make sure that your material is able to get past all of the threads there. And the next thing you want to do is put the retaining ring uh, with the uh, pointy teeth there towards the uh, boat vent. There's a little tab here and you can see there's a slot there so make sure that's lined up as well. It locks it into place so it's not uh, wiggling around and it lines up with the teeth as well. And from here you're going to press down on this um, to get the teeth to go through the material and then uh, once that happens we'll put our ring on to retain it permanently. All right, I did have to press a little bit, put a little bit of force on the ring to get the teeth to puncture through the material, which 
it has and it's locked into place. And then you want to put the actual ring on, uh, the nut. You'll notice that one side of it looks different than the other. This side is labeled bottom, so make sure that goes towards what would be the bottom of your canvas once it's installed on the boat. All right, now our nut is on there as well. It's very firm, won't turn anymore. When you're putting that on, I found it helpful to grab hold of the cap of the uh, boat vent while I'm turning the nut. That way I've got the, uh, the entire thing secure and it's not trying to twist on me. So hold the, the cap of the vent from the back of the canvas and then turn the nut until you're not able to anymore and you should be good to go. And this one is all done. You can see nice tight seal around the edge. The canvas should pull pretty well away from that and uh, intent nicely once the poles are installed and the cover is on the boat. I'm going to go ahead and install the other two and then uh, show you how the poles fit. As I was about to cut the hole for the very last boat vent on the front portion of our cover, I just realized that I'd been doing this the hard way. I can actually use this ring to make the line instead of having to wiggle my marker underneath the cap. So what I'm going to do on this one is use the ring and draw my line on the inside of the ring and then cut along the line. And that should be a little bit easier than trying to get the Sharpie marker underneath the, uh, the cap of the boat vent and doing it from the top side. So that'll save a little bit of time and should be much easier. So here's the front section of the snap-on cover. It's on without the support pole. The boat vent is installed. Nice and flush fit. Everything looks good. We're going to take our existing support pole and from the bottom here, you can see that there's a hole there in the middle and the snap on the end of our support pole is not going to snap onto anything but it should fit perfectly right in there as most of the support poles are the same size there so we got that on from the bottom and if we take a look at the top we got a perfect fit there and it's creating a really good shape there actually better than without the uh, the vent. So with just my support pole, normally how it's been over the years, attached to the snap, it creates a very um, point, uh, a sharp point there that I think stresses the, the canvas quite a bit. This, since it has a much bigger surface area there for the part where it's tenting, it, uh, it seems like it's putting a lot less pressure on the canvas and it's actually creating a better slope all around where we'll have the water trickling off of the cover and uh, in case it does rain. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. It looks great. Okay, we've got the back half of our cover on as well. And uh, as you can see, the boat vents are on, firmly in place. And just like the front, it looks like they're creating uh, a much bigger footprint there at the top. So the sharp point where the snap normally would have been uh, is not there anymore. I'm really happy with this. In addition to venting, it looks like it's also going to add a little bit more life to our cover and not create as much of a stress point where the poles are. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe and leave any comments below or questions you may have.